All right, Houston at Baltimore. Tad, start us off with the Houston offense. Houston offense. I'm going to pit center Chris Myers and his ability to keep Haloni Nada under control. Now, Houston, they're going to run some stretch plays, of course, to try to run away from Haloni Nada, you know, try to stay away from the big guys up front because they got uh, Terrence Cody playing defensive tackle for them as well in Baltimore. But on some plays, uh, that center, Chris Myers, who's a little undersized but is a pro ball alternate, uh, he's going to have to win a couple of the one-on-one -on -one battles against Haloni Nada and, uh, and Terrence Cody in order for Houston to be successful. Hey, Roz, how about the defense? I think it all comes down to their line setting the edges against Houston's offensive line because unlike uh, other teams like to just go run north and south, Houston usually likes to run more off tackle than most other teams. So I really think it comes down to whether or not they can win the battle in the trenches and then the linebackers support with Ray Lewis to be able to stop the run because we all know how good Houston is running the football with their two dominant backs. So if they can stay disciplined, it also comes down to very good tackling as well. Ed Reed might give them some support in the uh, run defense, but it really comes down to those linebackers as well, staying sound and really getting on these line, uh, the running backs and stopping the run. Yeah, and Tad, how about the key defensive matchup for Houston? I mentioned Terrence Cody for Baltimore. I'm going to go to the other side, the defensive tackle, Sean Cody for the Texans. And I think it's going to be a big for him to have a Haloti Nada type game. He needs to occupy blockers and allow this skilled group of linebackers to make plays on Ray Rice. I think the front seven for Houston is as good as anyone in the league. Maybe not as good as San Francisco, but right there with them. And uh, they're going to need to control Ray Rice, and Sean Cody's going to be a key to doing that. Hey, Roz, how about that Baltimore offense? Well, as much of a roller coaster ride as Joe Flacco's been this season, the Ravens are a 12-4 team. And if you really break it down their offense, the Baltimore Ravens go as Ray Rice goes. And you look at those four losses, he didn't score a touchdown in any of those four games. He also averaged just 39 yards in those four games. The Ravens are 11-0 and when Ray Rice gets at least 18 carries a game. And if you look at all those wins the Ravens have had, he's averaged 100 yards rushing in those games, and he scored all 12 of his rushing touchdowns. So it's really establishing Ray Rice early. And if you saw what he did um, against New England a couple of years ago, we had that rip, that big 80-yard touchdown run in Foxborough, really the way it set the tone for this offense, it could have the same effect against Houston this week. These two teams did play earlier this season. Uh, it was early on in the season. Matt Schaub was still the quarterback for Houston. Uh, but... I took a look at it, and Arian Foster was shut down in this game. Foster was out for the first couple of games of the season. We know that, so he was just starting to get his legs back mm -hmm. for this one uh, after the hamstring injury. They shut him down. Oh, yeah. Um, he only had, I'm not sure, it was, it was about 40, 48 or 49 yards, I think, if, if, if memory serves, and they shut him down. Both, this is going to be a very defensive game. Both of these teams love to blitz. They were in blitz schemes against each other the whole time. Basically, they were run blitzes, obviously, to try to stop Ray Rice and to try to stop Arian Foster. Rice ran for 101 yards, but Flacco didn't do all that much, and Foster was completely shut down. What you saw with Baltimore is they kept coming out in 5-2 in their linebackers. They usually had one that sort of acted as a running back spy that uh, was one, one of their more versatile linebackers who could easily drop back into the pass, they were on Arian Foster the whole time. But Arian Foster's better, th better now. I mean, he, he's, he's, he's played a whole a season thing. now. He's, every time that we've, we, we, we said this last week, we said this last week, we said last time Arian Foster played the Bengals, they just shut him down. He couldn't do anything. Well, Arian Foster ran for 150 yards last week. And was clearly the most dominant Including that sideline run. Which was, was amazing. So, yeah, I love that sideline run. I mean, how do you not yeah, step you out of bounds there? Great. I have no idea. Uh -huh. uh, and the bow that he likes to do <laughs> when he gets in. I love Arian Foster. I'm a big, yeah. I'm a big Arian Foster guy. He's going to be the key for sure. Houston. Yeah. They, they can't win without him. Sure. And that play action But But it's so similar important. with both teams then because they both got the great front seven. Yeah, very. You know, they both have quarterbacks where you're kind of like, uh... You know, and then they got these running backs 
that are superstars in this league that catch screens, that catch balls out of the backfield, that run hard, that run stretch, and run up the middle. I mean, they're, they're great. They're mirror images of each other. One has been there before. The other is their first rodeo. I mean, you kind of think, you want to say that the Houston Texans are a budget Baltimore Ravens, but I think that some of the stuff, and this is, goes to how important Wade Phillips mm. is, some of the stuff that Wade Phillips does as defensive coordinator for the Texans almost puts them right up there. I mean, they, they can play just as good a defense sometimes. Yeah. And we've seen that the Ravens are fallible. Remember that Chargers game? Yo, they got crushed. I mean, they are fallible, and they were hyped up for that game. Yep. That was a big one. So we'll have to see sort of how it works out there. Yeah, Joe they, Flacco is having yeah. the worst year of his career. Absolutely, yeah. A 58% completion percentage, that's good for 26 in the NFL. Mm -hmm. He's looking worse and worse and worse, so more focus is getting put on Ray They haven't Rice. been to a Super Bowl under this regime yet. They've they been, haven't. They've been great. And they've some are some, wondering if yeah. they can. They've been to some AFC title games, but no Super Bowls. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, a -Roz? You like You like the Ravens in this one? Going as much as I want to pick Houston, which is like the baby Ravens to me, the way they play defense and the way they've been running the football, I think they establish Ray Rice as not only the running back, but as a receiver as well. Uh, it's going to be a 13-10 to game, but I think in the end, it's one big defensive play that wins the game for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I like these defenses and running games equally effective. You know, I think they're both awesome. I like the Texans receivers a little better just because they do have that one superstar. I like Andre. You know, he's getting his legs back. He had that big touchdown at the end of the game. I like him better than Bolden. I like the tight ends for ten, uh, for the Texans as much as I like, you know, Dennis Pitta and Ed Dixon as well. Um, QB position, I give uh, mine and Roz's brother from another mother. I think Flacco looks a little bit like both of us. So I give him a slight edge based on the experience and uh, being at home. The difference, I think, is that Flacco's going to take some chances downfield, whereas Yates will kind of be in control. For that reason, I think Flacco turns the ball over a couple times. I think the Texans take advantage. I think the Texans win. I'm also taking the Texans in this game because... I don't think that this is the Baltimore Ravens team that's going to go to the AFC Championship game. And I think that it's Arian Foster. I think both teams are going to be running the ball constantly. I think that Ray Rice is probably going to get just about what he got in that earlier matchup, about 100 yards. And I think that Arian Foster is going to run for about 170 yards, five receptions, one rushing touchdown. I think he's going to have an amazing game. Teams have been running on the Ravens a lot lately. They, their, their defense, especially their run defense, has taken major steps back in the second mm -hmm. half of the season. For somebody like Arian Foster, who I think is so underrated, I mean, he's underrated if you make him the number five running back in the league. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he, he may be the best. He's the best. I think he's the best. We don't talk about him as the best. Mm -hmm. Often we talk about this guy, Ray Rice, is the best. Yeah. I think Arian Foster is better. Mm -hmm. I think he can do more things for you. Um... I do think Houston's going to win this one, and what I think it's going to look like, and the reason I think they're going to win, I, I think it's going to look a lot like the Cincinnati game. That's what I think. Touchdown off of a turnover, as you said, mm -hmm. taking advantage of those turnovers and finding a way with Arian Foster to win. Mm -hmm. TJ Yates throwing a couple deep balls, mm -hmm. making things happen. Yeah. You throw a few 30-yard passes on drives, then you're just opening it up for Arian Foster. And all he's got to do is get to the end zone. He's got a nose for it. Yeah, I like the Texans in this one. Let's and uh, any of you fans out there, let us know on Twitter or let us know on the message board when watching this podcast, who looks more like Flacco, me or A-Ross? Because I, <laughs> I think we both have some Flacco-esque qualities to us. I think that that's probably yeah. true.